Today I'm going to show you guys how to make this tutu with this really cute train, like a ribbon trimmed train. The front of this tutu is just like a traditional tutu, just like that, but in the back it has a really cute long train with ribbon trim on it. So let's get started. So the material that you're going to need for this tutu is you're going to need a sewing machine right here. You're also going to need some tool. These are the colors that I'm using, purple, pink, yellow, and turquoise. Same with the ribbon. It's the same colors, purple, pink, yellow, and turquoise right there. You're also going to need a nice pair of fabric scissors, a lighter, a ruler, and then I do have a tutorial on how I made these. Um, this is just how I cut my tool, a quick and easy way to cut tool. So. Um, yeah, these are just like the measurements and stuff. These are actually not correct. I need to actually remake mine, but um, I just go by what measurements are on here. Like this is 10 inches long, and if you fold it in half, it makes a 5 inch, uh, five inch long tutu, which is normally a newborn size. Um, but yeah, these are just, I just go by whatever measurements are saying on there. I need to like rewrite on them. <laughs> but yeah, I've had them for a while, as you guys can tell. They are all beat up and taped up and everything, so. But anyway. Yeah, I'll put the link to that tutorial in the description down below. The tool I got from Hobby Lobby. This ribbon I got from Hobby Lobby. This one I hear I got from giftsinternational.com. And yeah, and the sewing machine. This is the brand of sewing machine right there. It's the Brother. You're also going to need something to put your waistband on. I use um, the crochet material that you can get at Hobby Lobby. You can use a headband. It's up to you. But I usually buy this on the spool and I cut it to the size that I need and then I'll sew it to, together right here. All the measurements will be in the description down below, by the way. And you can get some sort of mannequin. I got this one off of eBay. Or you can use like a paper towel roll or something to hold your waistband on so it's so much easier to tie the tool. Okay, so uh, the front part is not going to have ribbon on it. You are more than welcome to sew ribbon on the front part, but the front part of the tutu is just going to be like a traditional tutu. And the back part, the part that's going to have the train, is the part that I'm going to be sewing the ribbon to. And for the, for the train, I, cut, I um, count out 12 columns on the crochet band, which is the rows going up and down. And I do 12 of them. So I'll do six where, where you stitched right here. I'll do six columns this way, which is actually each of the holes. So you count six. So I'll do six on this side and six on this side. And since I am doing four different colors, it's going to be three sets. So it'll be the four colors here, four colors here, and four colors here of the, the train. And then the front is just going to be all the colors like that. So. I do have a tutorial on how I make a traditional tutu, so I'll link that in the description down below. But for the time being, I'm just going to go ahead and make the tutu in the front, and then I'll show you what I do to make the train in the back, because that's, the, that's the question that most people have. Okay, so I finished the front of the tutu, and rubber bands will be your best friend while making tutus. So I usually grab uh, several rubber bands just to hold it off to the side. I don't tie them tight, I just rest it on there. Um, so that way it's just out of the way, it doesn't get all tangled up and get all in your way and stuff like that. So I did, I finished the first one just so I can show you guys what I did. Here's the first strip and the ends, I'll show you guys right now though, but the ends I cut at an angle and then where the tip of this one ends, the back of the beginning of the next one begins. So then it goes from the back and then down to the tip and then right here is from the back down to the tip, all the way down to you get to the bottom of the train. That way when you sew the ribbon on, it's just straight down like that. And it's not like clumpy or looks off. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next color, which is turquoise. And by the way, if you guys want to see, like when I go to Hobby Lobby or when I buy material online, if you guys want to see like stuff that I buy, go head over to my Instagram. I am always taking Instagram photos and stuff of everything that I buy. So go ahead and head over to my Instagram and check it out and you guys can see a lot of stuff that I purchase and that way it gives you guys some ideas and stuff like that if you guys are interested and I have a lot of other different kinds of photos on there as well so the next color I'm going to do is and these are the measurements that I'm doing okay let me just show you guys because this is for a size 5 just so you guys can get an idea I usually just kinda like guesstimate um, the length and stuff but for the bottom one it is 20 inches long. So from here all the way down is about 20 inches long. That's what I do for that one. But actually, I'll show you guys right now when I fold it. I cut it 
20 inches long and then um, I don't fold it directly in half. I'll show you guys that in, in a minute um, as well. But this one I did 20 inches and then the middle one I did 14 inches and then the top one I did 10 inches. So hopefully you guys can see that. So I'm going to get the 20 inch one first. And since I'm doing three sets, it's going to be the set of four colors here, set of four colors here, set of four colors here. I'm doing three sets. I'm only going to be cutting three. I already cut all the yellow, so that's one, because this is going to be where the fold is on the two two. This is going to be where the bottom is, and then where this area is is the next bottom. So that's one. I'm going to wrap it around again. Two and three. That way it's 20 inches long because it's going to be folded right here. Don't cut on both ends. Just cut on the end over here and leave this end. Don't cut this end because if you stretch it all the way out it will be 40 inches. But folded in half it is 20 inches. So I'm just going to cut it on this end over here just like that and that way it is a really 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 long piece of tool. Okay. So I'm going to get the one piece, well this is where I'm telling you how I'm going to be folding it. I don't fold it, like I don't take it, I'll just move this out of the way, okay, and just direct. Actually, I don't take it and fold it joyously in half, like match it back ends and stuff. What I do is maybe from the out, fold it four, maybe do it like five inches, and I'll fold it and I'll put it right there. By the end, so, yeah, but, so that one long ends, like I don't know where to right here. There's one go ahead piece and there's a short right here. It's just like that. And then you're just gonna need it and attach on how you here. If you guys band see a tutorial on like attach it to the link crochet button down below. Um like the regular said before I'll have you to in the description to below on how you make bands and stuff traditional to and how you type so different kinds of piece like that you get. So yes, one. There's one which is the four palette one. The next you just whisk to me depending on 14 inch size again. You just kinda get cut three on what this is again you're making. So I'm going to add three, two, three. I'm just going to cut it on one end. I'm going to put two pieces off to the side, which I need to keep the two to this with their pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and put this over there. There we go. Tool is very tedious to work with. It just gets a lot of getting used to because it seems like it's very staticky and yeah. Anyway, so you're gonna just do the same thing about maybe four to five inches from the end. That's where you're gonna fold it so that way one side, one piece is longer than the other. And go ahead and attach that. I hope you guys can see all this. Just like that. And then you're going to cut your last piece, which is the shortest one at the top, and you're gonna cut three pieces of that too. One, two, and three. And then you're done with the yellow and we're done with the turquoise. Now you can cut all your pieces first before you go ahead and tie them all on. That way you have them all there. But um, I'm just kind of going, I usually cut them all first, but I'm just kind of like going with the flow, so. Okay, you're just going to do the same thing again. About four to five inches from the end, fold it, and you're going to put it to the top. The top row. Okay, so there you go, just like that. And now we are going to cut each end at a diagonal. And the reason why I tie them on first before I cut each end is because I need to make sure that I where the bottom point is going to be will match up with the the back part of the of the next piece. You don't want to cut them and then they get all uneven. So for the first one I'm just going to cut starting kind of somewhere in the middle and cut at a diagonal slant so that way you probably guys probably cannot see that but it's like it's at a slant. It's like a diagonal slant not straight across. It's like a slant. And then I'm going to get the next piece which is this one and find out where the point of this meets put it right there and then I'm going to cut back here all the way down to this corner right here again so at like a diagonal slant and make sure that your piece stays kind of straight there we go so there there's these two pieces like that and this one might need to be there okay you just kind of have to like go excuse my four-year-old in the background he's kind of loud <laughs> okay so now the next one 
Now here's where it gets a little, I think this piece always ends up basically even, which is kind of weird, I don't know why, but what I usually do is that I'll usually kind of make this piece less, because this one, the point goes all the way to the end of this piece. So I'm going to take this one and kind of make the slant less slanted. It's still going to be a slant, but just kind of make it a little bit less, but then don't cut further up here at the top here. It's still a slant, but not as dramatic. And then you're just going to do the same thing, put it here, and then you're just going to cut it. A slant here. So this one's not going to be as systematic as a slant angle. So I don't know if you guys can see these pieces. It's kind of like a triangle. You're cutting out like a piece at the end. This and just need to go to the next piece, which is this one. Do the same thing. And then again, this one. And keep doing this with the next until you to the very bottom. Just same thing. Get to the one. This is actually seems very difficult, but it's actually not. And then, you see, I'm just going to do the same thing. The piece here. There. And then you can just toss those pieces in. So there you go. That's how you do them. And I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this tutu. And then I'll show you guys how to sew the ribbon on. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. So there's four sets, which is yellow, turquoise, purple, pink, yellow, turquoise, purple, pink, yellow, turquoise, purple, pink. So those are all the ones for the train. So it's four colors here, four colors here, and four colors here for the trains, which makes 12. Okay, so now you just can go ahead and take the tutu off of your mannequin or your paper towel roll or whatever you use to hold your tutu on. And what we're going to do now is we're going to be sewing the ribbon on the ends. So what I like to do is I like to have the train part towards me and then the rest of the tutu facing away from me. And this just got all tangled. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my first color, which on here is pink. And I don't cut. I don't measure and cut. I just leave it on the spool. Just go ahead and uh, heat seal the end. That's what the lighter's for. Sorry, I don't know if you guys saw that, but yeah. You just run the lighter across the end and it'll heat seal it. And then you go ahead and put it with, if you have like a pattern or something, put that face down. And then have like the ugly side or the back side of the ribbon face up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out just the pink from the rubber band. That way it keeps everything else away. And I'm going to start with the shortest piece and then just go on to the next one and the next one and the next one until I sew all the way down. So when you go on to the shortest piece, you're going to sew, um, see how it starts here closer to the tutu and then it comes up here to a point? Like that's where you're going to sew. You're going to start here and you're going to sew all the way to this point and then when you get to the next piece, you're going to start again at the back and sew all the way to the point and then again and again and again until you get to the very bottom. So. Go ahead and put it into the machine. I hope you guys were able to see that. I try to keep it in the camera. And then you're gonna front stitch a little bit and then go ahead and back stitch. And you can use the same color thread, um, but I'm using, it, it depends on your customer or it depends on your preference. I normally just use white um, unless my customer requests something else. Um, depending on what the kind of tutu is, like if it's if it's black, then I normally always use use black as well. So I'm gonna put this all the way down, and then get the next one, which is this one, and then just keep going to get to the very end. And this tutu does not take very long to make. You guys could keep the train as is without sewing ribbon on it. If you guys don't want to, it still looks really cute, but this 
um, request was to have ribbon on the train. But it's up to you, it's your preference. Oh, and for the measurement for each set of these colors, if you want specific ribbon length, it's usually about uh, three feet, which is like a yard. It's usually about one yard. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. So, if you guys need exact measurements. So each column of color would need one yard of ribbon. stitch, cut your thread, and then cut the ribbon, and again, heat seal. There. And then you're done with the first color. And right now you can't really see, it kind of waves, um, it goes like back and forth like a wave. Um, you can make it look, you can fix it up once you get it back onto the, onto the mannequin. Once you get it back on the mannequin, then you can like fix it all up. But I'll show you guys what it looks like once I get it back onto the mannequin. But let's just go ahead and get onto the next color, which is purple. I usually just go down the line instead of doing all the pinks and then all the. It's just so much easier just to go down the line. So I'm gonna put the pink to the side. I'm going to purple. And then again, you're going to heat seal the end. Put it face down, or yeah, pretty side down, and then get your first You guys can use the same method on the front part of the tutu. You don't have to cut the ends of the tool in a slant. You can just leave them all straight and you just start at the very top one and just sew all the way down. If you guys want to have like the same effect for the entire tutu, like the wavy effect. I do have a tutorial on how to make the wavy tutu, so I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. But that's basically what you will do to the front part of the tutu if you decide to put ribbon on the front part. But in this one, I'm not going to. But I do have a tutorial on how to do that. Okay, so once all the ribbon is sewn on, you're gonna go ahead and put it back on your mannequin or put it somewhere where you're able to fix up the ribbon. I already did the yellow and the blue and I'm working on the purple. So here at the top, I usually just kind of like curl it over a little bit and then I just kind of tug and pull the ribbon back and forth to make it have the wavy effect like that. Let me see if I can, so you guys can see closer. To see how it kind of waves back and forth like that. You're just going to go ahead and do that to all the pieces. So I did, just going in a row and I'm making sure the ribbon is straight and flat along with the tool and it just looks so 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 pretty. Just keep doing that to, to all the pieces of ribbon and tool. I just, like again, I just curl it over here at the top, and then I just kind of tug and pull back and forth all the way to get to the bottom. And it's best to use very soft, flowy ribbon with this type of tutu, if you're going to do the wavy stuff, don't use like stiff ribbon, it doesn't flow very well. So just a tip, I know giftsinternational.com has really nice satin ribbon that is very very flowy. And then in the wedding section at Hobby Lobby they have um, very soft satin ribbon. I'm just gonna keep doing that to all the pieces. Okay guys, so this is what the finished tutu looks like. 
You can see the train, it goes all the way down and then the front part is just like a regular tutu. So you guys can see. So yeah, that's how you make um, a tutu with a train. You can make the train as long as you want, you can make it shorter. It's really up to you. Um, but I'll put all the size, I'll put the size chart in the description down below on like this part of the tutu. And then you just, you know, guesstimate short and then medium and then long. So, yeah. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Or you guys can go to my one of my Facebook fan pages and send me a message. Or to my Instagram or any of those. And they're all in the description down below. 